Who's got number one talk show in Vegas? We Who's gonna leave it out there in the set tonight? We Who's gonna have a lot of fun doing it? We Probably just the Philippines on three. One, two, three. DJ yeah. Sonia. Tonight, live from the Inspire Theater on the corner of Las Vegas Boulevard and Fremont Street, in the heart of fabulous downtown Las Vegas, we present Vegas Talk. Starring Dylan Jorgensen. Also featuring Jeremy Martin. Preston Nelson, and music by yours truly, DJ Lenny Love Alfonso. Tonight's guest, UNLV professor, Martin Schiller. Author, Guillermo Barjona. Music by Sonia Sillinger. And now, ladies and gentlemen, let's give it up for the man who thinks NRA stands for National Religious Association. Hey, yeah! No, 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 keep it coming, keep it coming, don't stop. DJ Lenny Love, kill it, thank you very much. Give a big round of applause for DJ Lenny Love, Alfonso. How you doing today, DJ? I feel good. Feeling good? Yeah, me too, me too. We got a great looking crowd with us tonight. Presidential debate between Donald Trump and Hillary Clinton. Everybody watch this, anybody? Yeah, yeah, you can cheer, you can do whatever you want to do if you want to respond that way. <laughs> One conspiracy theory, though, pointed out that Hillary would scratch her nose or rub her face if she wanted the moderator to interrupt and help her make a point. Some argued this was just a nervous tick. Others said it was nothing at all, while some others believe she's actually allergic to Donald Trump. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What do you think? I, I think it goes both ways. It looks like Hillary gave uh, Trump the sniffles. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's my mic, yeah. my mic. Uh, there, there was no real clear winner in this week's debate. That is, of course, unless you consider the winner to be every other country in the world, <laughs> which I do, yeah. That's sad. No, no, it's okay. They're not all winners. A new medical article explains most Americans believe prescription drugs are too expensive. Am I right? Right? It's prescription drug, too expensive. The advice given by the author, stop buying your drugs from the guy at the bus stop. <laughs> and the price goes drastically down. Bunch of addicts. Uh, we actually have a medical related guest tonight. He founded the Nevada Institution of Personalized Medicine, also known as NIPM. Yeah. This organization is, is more noticed by the public uh, in the winter uh, than at any other ping ping winter. <laughs> Nips joke. Hey now, hey now. Our other guest wrote a book entitled Terremoto on surviving the disaster of 2001. Well, the other disaster of 2001. Never forget. Never forget. <laughs> a recent study shows that women need more sleep than men because their brains work harder. Right, women? Right, ladies? Yeah? <laughs> Yeah, this makes perfect sense to me. I mean, have you ever seen how much longer it takes a woman to solve a problem? <laughs> there you go. There you go. Now I got the crowd. I should have started with that one. Uh, you know, last week I made a joke about Tim Tebow uh, playing baseball and how God hates baseball and so he's not going to get as much help like he did, you know, in, in football. Uh, but there's a new viral video that shows Tim Tebow, his first at bat in the minor leagues, he hit a home run. Yeah, first at bat, home run over the fence. What the video doesn't show is that that was his only hit of the game and baseball still sucks, right? <laughs> <laughs> the video didn't tell the whole story, not double, at all. Double downing a, a Yeah, home run. oh yeah. Uh, there's a new treatment for those suffering from kidney stones. Yeah, they say riding roller coasters can help a person past the stone. Mm -hmm. I guess the, the amusement park screens will be starting in the parking lot from now on. Just, ah! <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, guy over there. An Asian American rock band from Portland is waiting to hear back from the Supreme Court if they can trademark their offensive band name, The Slants. Yeah, true story. The band is claiming their name has nothing to do with being Asian, but rather the entire band having one leg shorter than the other. <laughs> <laughs> it's a true story. It's slants. The lead singer's name is Eileen. <laughs> <laughs> The head of the Yosemite National Park resigns amid claims of a hostile work environment. 
Park Superintendent Don Neubacher said he tried to explain to his employees, it's a national park, the bears live here. <laughs> it's, <laughs> their, it's their home. It's <laughs> Residence. That was, I love it. You guys are a great audience. Up next, we have our community table interview with Preston Nelson interviewing Guillermo Barahona about his book, Terremoto. Give it up one more time for DJ Lenny Love Alfonso. Ladies and gentlemen, one more time for Jeremy Martin. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. I, I agree, I do like a young Morris Chestnut, Ow! you know. <laughs> anyway, our uh, first guest is an author of two books. The first book is called Def Gamble. The second book is called Terremoto. Please give it up for Guillermo Barahona. Yeah! There we go, there we go. Hey, Chet. Yeah. Good to see you, Thank you for having me. Right on. How you doing today? Pretty good. Pretty yeah. busy, as always, you know. <laughs> so first, let me just tell you, I'm proud of you. Oh, thank Doing you. those two books, you know, getting them yeah. done, you know. Uh, thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's a lot of work. Yeah. Definitely a lot of work. So you said the first one is called uh, Death Gamble? Death Gamble, correct. Talk to me about it. Well, I mean, Death Gamble, what, I wrote it, what, 2013 for a contest for the National Novel Writing Month Association, which is an organization that every November, they challenge people to write a book that is 50,000 words or more. So... You know, I spent most of, most of November trying to write this in the, like, out of those 25 days that it took me, I didn't sleep for three of those days. So um, I guess the story was pretty well finished by that time. So right <laughs> How long did it take you to write it? 25 days. 25 days? 25 days. But this is more of, uh, like, a fiction? No, that is fiction. Yeah, no, it's... Uh, Almost to an extent, uh, description of my love affair with Las Vegas, you know, all right. that like uh, glamour of the casinos and then the mob mythos that goes through all Las Vegas. Right. So I sort of took a story out of that and I started in Los Angeles with the murder of an accountant. And then, you know, my character, you know, he finds a clue that takes him right here to Las Vegas and mm -hmm. uh, said clue just unravels a mafia conspiracy and then all hell breaks loose. So, yeah. you know, pretty, pretty action movie afterward like right, that. Right. But it's sort of a... The point of that was to try to expose the city more so than just a place for, you know, gambling and all the glamour of the lights. You yeah. know, there's more to Las Vegas than just what people think. And your motivation for it? Well, the motivation for it was to, uh, for the contest. Yeah. Uh, you know, the National Novel Writing Month Association yeah. does a contest every November of the year. So it was sort of to make... Uh, a statement for that. This one right here, Terremoto. Because that's based on, you know, Real something life. that I lived through back in yeah, 2001. Yeah, talk, talk to me about that one. Okay, so Terremoto was, it's the story that when I went through the earthquakes in El Salvador back in 2001. So, you know, it was started in January 13th to 2001, and it was, you know, a 7.9 magnitude on Richter scale earthquake, and it wow. lasted 45 seconds. So, you know, that sort of completely tore, tore all my world upside down to an right. extent. I mean... Granted, it wasn't an easy childhood in El Salvador, but that story was more of saying that it wasn't just me suffering, so just, but rather, you know, seven million people that suffered through that earthquake. I'll be screaming. I'll be screaming. You know, myself and my brother, that we were alone at that time, and my parents were uh, remodeling a house that we were trying to sell at the time. Yeah. I mean, what, what was it like, just like... You know, if you finished the book, kind of he was telling me that it was kind of difficult for you writing the book. Oh, I mean, what? I wrote, started writing this in 2014 after I published Death Gamble. Yeah. So I felt like it was the need to tell a, a story about an experience that I went through. And of all the stories, you know, that one felt like there was not enough literature on. I mean, you see a lot of movies about disasters and right. such, but, you know, and you see a lot of camera work when something happens, like, you know, in, in Indonesia or Japan, Haiti, you know, all of these cameras are for a month or two. But then yeah. afterwards, people just leave thinking that everything is over. But, you know, once the camera cameras leave, yeah. everything continues on. Life yeah. has to continue on despite all it's the people that there, yeah. you know, perished and they disappeared and yeah. left. Right. You know. How long did it take you to write this one? That one I wrote it in the, um, throughout the course of 2014, but I didn't get around to finish editing it with my friend Robert. You know. yeah. It took us nearly two years to write it. I had to finish school, and then once I graduated UNLV last year, right. Right. You know, I made the push for editing and yeah. revising, and in the end, you know, we... Like, this is basically like a real-life experience. Mm -hmm. I couldn't do it. I'm from Philadelphia. I'm a city guy. I scream like a girl. Oh, well. Laugh if you want. But still, like, this is very amazing. Home. Mm -hmm. And uh, who do you like? This book is like, for what age group? I know it's obviously for, like, older people. 
Oh but yes. Which, which, how young can it go? I mean, without for, them being traumatized. Oh, without them being traumatized. I mean, that the, the fine not getting traumatized. Yeah. So I mean, yeah. <laughs> but for Terremoto, I sort of leave it to at least people that when you start getting a bit of a consciousness of what the yeah. world about you. So like 10, yeah. 11 will be the youngest that I will recommend it to. Yeah. I mean, but otherwise, you know, anything middle school, high school, and up, so that they yeah. get a little bigger understanding yeah. of the world. Kinda around I, them. I work with something back home with a lot of children. Uh, every month, I send them like uh, mm -hmm. fresh clothes, like undershirt, socks, white mm -hmm. beaters, white shirts, and. Uh, yes. I do want to get to the point where I can start sending them books. Mm -hmm. I'm proud of you, you know what I mean? Especially in the age of 2016 where everybody's, they are Instagrammed up, you know, mm. don't even know left from right and Pokemon go this, Pokemon go that. You know, you're definitely taking yes. it back to where, you know, what's important. Mm. You know what I mean? So I follow you, man. Thank you. Appreciate it, man. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yes. Thank you, sir. <laughs> well, uh, All right, well, you guys are going to absolutely love our next guest, not just because you're all his students, but also because he loves Seinfeld, plays squash, and is the director of the Nevada Institute of Personalized Medicine. Give it up for UNLV professor, Mr. Martin Schiller. Come on out. Hey. Oh, wow. Whoa, what are you thinking? Do you want a hug? You want yes. a high five? We do right. anything you want. Hello, professor. Yeah. Yeah, Mr. Martin yeah. Schiller, thank you for Hi. coming out. Thank Excited. You. Woo. Yeah. Awesome. Okay. It's great to meet a movie star. <laughs> no, no, it's great to meet a, you know, a teacher. Scientist. I, I dropped out of college. Scientist. I don't know. Yeah. Scientist. Oh, scientist. Yes. Uh, okay, so I want to actually start. I've, I've, I've surveyed some of your students. Um, you teach at UNLV, and I asked them about your personality so I could understand what you were like before you came on the show. And I got the craziest mix of personality. So you're... They say you're really dry. Uh -huh. They say that you are funny, but a lot of people won't notice it until they're in your class and they get the subtleties of it. Mm -hmm. So could you just break down what you think's funny in the world? Um, I could give you an example. Yeah, how does your personality yeah. work? That's yeah. definitely what I'm yeah, looking for. Yeah. So when I um, first got married, um, it's my 25th wedding anniversary this year. Oh, right? yeah. yeah 25 years. Um, when we first Sorry, got just, married, um, yeah. shortly after my honeymoon, we went out to dinner. And um, my wife started ordering, and she started choking on, you know, like the ice in Ooh. her glass. And uh, as she was starting to order, Doesn't and sound. like uh, anyone and nice would have, choke? like, went and, you know, comforted her, but or give her the Heimlich I, maneuver. I made a I don't joke. Know. Yeah. I made a joke. So I said, you know, I keep telling her to stop smoking, but she just won't stop. <laughs> and and my wife, you know, really. Loves practical jokes, wanted but to not kill on you. her. Yeah. So she wanted to kill me, but she couldn't do anything because she was choking. <laughs> so you saw your wife choking so, so and I thought, was... that's the moment to make a joke because she can't get after me. Yeah, so I was quite <laughs> proud of that. All right, let's give it up. That's a good, that's a, that's a yeah. That's... Yes, thank you. Have you thought about yeah. being a marriage? That, well, that's going to work here, but not at home, by the way. No, you're in a lot of trouble, yeah. yeah. But have you thought about yeah. being a marriage counselor? Because um, I, I don't recommend it. Okay. Yeah. No, <laughs> You're no. good at what you do. Or you're really bad yeah. at that. Yeah. I, I know my limitations, okay. and I'm good with them. <laughs> okay. So I want to know, what have you been doing the last few years at UNLV? Well, we've been working on several projects, but I'll tell you about some of our work on HIV. So um, HIV is a virus, and when it infects people, it actually inserts its DNA into our DNA and becomes part of you, and that's why it can't be cured. And so our group um, developed a new technique called gene editing, um, or we applied gene editing, and we found a little region of the HIV virus DNA that never changes, and we built what's the equivalent of molecular scissors that would go into those cells and cut the HIV DNA and damage it, and then the cells stop making virus. And it works pretty good in a Petri dish, and we are now working with a team from BYU that's uh, doing this in animals and uh, mice. Whoa, that's pretty cool. Yeah. That really is really cool. Thank you. And, and other groups have now started doing this, but I think we were uh, the, the first group on this in our lab so, right so here at UNLV. So, yeah, cause, so you've, you've got this strand of DNA, and you're saying that HIV needs part? Like, like where where the scissors go? Like, what are you cutting? So the HIV DNA becomes part of your DNA. So you have a big stretch of your DNA with this little stretch of HIV. 
and then we make these molecular scissors that go right. in and specifically cut just the HIV DNA only. And then when the cell tries to repair it, it makes mistakes. Uh, and now the cell stops making virus. I remember watching Jurassic Park, and that's the only thing I know about DNA cutting, right? Yeah, yeah. I remember that little character was like snip, snip, and yeah. that's what you're doing. Pretty, now HIV pretty much, is like hitting they the invented door. it first. Well, yeah, of course, yeah. Yes. <laughs> yes. Would you go to Jurassic Park if it existed? Sure, sure. Yeah, you yeah. love dinosaurs, I can tell. Yeah. I'm a okay. biologist. <laughs> All right, so tell me about the uh, Nevada Institute of Personalized Medicine. Uh, I think it's a department at UNLV, and you're the director of it, so what is it okay. that you do? Okay, well, the, the Nevada Institute of Personalized Medicine is a, a new research unit at UNLV, and we, we don't teach. We actually just do research in the area of personalized medicine, and um, I run the show, and then I have my own lab where we do our own research. Okay, so you're actually not spending too much of your time, or any of your time teaching, right? You're just doing experiments and the bioinformatics stuff? Um, bioinformatics and experiments. All right, yeah. Yes. Like you said before, you're... Uh, we play for both teams. Both teams. Yeah, he plays yes. on both teams. Yes. But he's straight and married. Yes, I'm straight, married, <laughs> To be clear, I play for both teams. Both teams, meaning the experiments and the data side. That's right. And there's nothing sexual about that. No, no. No. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'll leave that one alone. Um, okay, so what is, what is personalized medicine? So, um, well, regular medicine, yeah, yeah. we um, treat people as a whole population, so everybody gets the same treatment. So, but when um, I go to the doctor, he knows my name. Yes, right, and that mm, makes it personalized. He, right. Um, so in, I see where you're going with this. Yeah. Cut me off yeah, card, yeah. yes. Yeah. So, like, um, I'm going to give one example uh, to help... Um, show how it works. So okay. there's um, a drug that is an anticoagulant that they give to people during surgery so you don't get a stroke, okay? And um, there's a few choices of drugs you could give someone. And one of them, the most common one, is called Plavix. Um, but Plavix, when it's given to a person, it's inactive, and then you have enzymes in your liver that make it active and that's how it works, and then it, it protects you against stroke. But it turns out that 15% of the population has a genetic change in the enzyme that converts it, so when you get Plavix, you're not really getting protected during surgery. Uh. And it's been shown if, in epidemiology, if you do a study, that more people get stroke um, from that on Plavix because of this problem. And all you have to do wow. is um, genotype them and understand that they have this mutation, and then you can give them warfarin or another drug. And so it's, it's using your genetic blueprint to tailor medicines specifically for you, right. and not just medicines, but risks for disease as well. Okay, and, so yeah, I have this unique DNA, so I should probably have a unique solution yep. to a lot of problems that are Yeah, and I'm sure yours is very unique. Yes. Are you talking about my ears? Uh, what? what? Um, everybody has... Um, ear hair. Everyone has ear hair. Some yes. people just treat it more I often than hair, others. I have ear hair, but yeah. I, I pick it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I know. That's like tell my girlfriend. That's the number one job she has. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So you have a startup. I want to talk about uh, Heligenics. Yeah. 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 We do. Um, we formed an LLC a few weeks ago, and we're licensing several technologies from uh, UNLV and my laboratory. And um, I'll give you an example of one of the technologies. And I actually, um, we got your DNA before I came here and analyzed it. Oh, and you did? What, yes. And we do. Um, from my we're, we're spit gonna be doing or something, or urine. We're going to be doing, we got your spit. We do personalized diets based on your genetics. We optimize a diet for you. And what we found out for you is... How much of a joke is this? What? What's going on right no, now? This What's is true. happening? So you have to drink more scotch, eat more steak, and, <laughs> and ice cream. I knew okay. it! I knew okay. it! That means no more Soylent. Man, mm -hmm. I have been on the whiskey and Soylent bandwagon, uh, and yes, people so are you like, have to no, switch. scotch and switch. steak. Yeah, should have known, um, should have known. Yeah. But seriously, what, what we do is... <laughs> We analyze, really we, we take so spit and we analyze it for a bunch of variants in people that can optimize the diet. So, you know, like some people may not be able to eat soy products or they may need to have more calcium oh, in their diet. Awesome. Yeah. And so we 
based on your blueprint, we give you a personalized diet to optimize your health um, for, for not too much. We haven't set the price yet, but it won't be very expensive. And you also you should deliver the food too. There's more money to be made there. Right. Yeah, you know, like once good, you know what they eat, you might as well be like, yeah, we'll deliver it for you. You know? Yeah, we're gonna try to hook up with a supermarket chain if that works out. I like it. All right, so we're about to play a game in a second, but I want to make sure we ask one final question that revolves around uh, how it affects people, right? Like, so, I mean, I guess we kind of have some example, but talk to me about what your vision is for how this will affect, like, an individual who signs up for, I guess, your program or who Yeah, joins. so, um, you know, people may be familiar with, like, a company called 23andMe, and they basically will... Sergey Brin's wife, yeah. Yeah, they will look at your genome and um, give you some interesting facts about it. Um, what our institute does is a little bit different. Um, we basically will sequence your genome and then look at things that are medically relevant. So, you know, it's geared towards personalizing the medicine like in the example that I gave you. And so this, this has the potential to help everyone. Um, there are other ways um, that are maybe beyond the scope of discussing here, um, but there's, you know, things called pharmacogenetics, undiagnosed <laughs> diseases, variants of unknown significance, but um, maybe not, maybe scotch and steak, not appropriate man. What's it for do this to my audience. Skin? We'll stick with I the scotch, know. steak, and ice cream. It's <laughs> no, going mean, to help your skin. Yeah, yeah. It's gonna, okay. So I want to know, Martin, would you mind sticking around during this break so we could talk about a new game called Micro Thing. Okay, I'm in. You're in? You're crazy. Micro Things. Okay, okay. I can't wait. <laughs> I can tell. <laughs> All right, go to our first zoomed in thing. Thing the first. No, you don't get to complain about washed out okay. anything. Yeah, it's just that's what you get. That's a dark field image, right? A dark field image, uh, incorrect. Actually, a little correct, but not okay. enough to build okay. off of. Maybe, hold on. Oh, you're right. Yes. Okay. <laughs> so the, yeah, this this is your probably 100x zoomed in. Mm -hmm. If you if you give up, it could, it could be a uh, you know a leaf field of microbes. It could be someone's yeah. armpit. Could be a nostril uh, I, of an I mean, elephant well, that's yeah. riding. A, I mean, it might just be me, but it, it looks only black. Okay, all right. So, zoom it out a little so bit. You can't a, see anything. It could oh, be. Oh, actually, a this trick might question. be the first zoom. Oh, no, this is the second zoom, yeah. So we're out now at 50x, let's say. I don't 50, really know. 50x. 50x. <laughs> we were 100x, now we're 50x. I don't know. Okay. Depends, it's relative to where the, the camera is. Um, <laughs> wow. Oh, my gosh. The others, yeah, audience, yell it. No, he needs your help. Audience, if you guys kept anything. Like, okay. Donald, that's, that's great. What do you think? She's whispering something. What do you guys think it might be? Donald Trump? That's crazy. Is that what you yeah, want to say? Yeah. It could be a peace of them. Of course it's a peace symbol. Everyone wants peace. Yeah. Um, Probably hippies. All right, what's your final guess? You can go with Donald Trump, peace symbol, or other. A hair. A hair. It's a hair. Zoom out all the way. It's a hair. Uh, it's Donald Trump. Correct. Well, wait a minute. Does, does Donald Trump have hair? <laughs> yeah, it's okay. <laughs> Donald Trump. We got to stop using him for everything. All right, next one. We got, we got three. Somebody got it right from the I audience. Know. That's crazy. That's yeah. why I didn't want to. I didn't want to buy into it. She's too smart. Yeah. All right. What she do you got here? She came from my lab, you know. I can believe it. I believe it. All right. All right. What do you got here? Just feel the aura. You know, blur your eyes a little bit. Let the focus kind of blur out. What are you feeling? Um, Hillary Clinton. You know, that, that would be a good guess. So you're pretty far off with it. Uh, you can think a lot more. Think a lot more red. Think a lot more peanut. Think a lot more nudity. Oh, boy. You know, my wife might watch this. <laughs> All right, think a lot more hemoglobin. All right, zoom it out one more. All right, is it obvious? At this point, you know I was messing with you. It's a celebrity. That's female. That's not Hillary Clinton. That's not Hillary Clinton. That's a singer. Oh, yeah. I don't listen to much music anymore. What are you guys that doing in the lab knows. all day? Aren't you just waiting for things to percolate? Yeah. And and Benz, Bunsen burners. Linda Ronstadt. For she an, has red hair. Right? Oh, so close. Zoom it out. It is uh, Super Bowl uh, singer Lady Gaga. Woo! Okay, yeah. Lady Gaga doesn't have red hair. <laughs> All right. I'm going to give you some so tips. I can't trust your hints now. <laughs> this next one is 
a hint you shouldn't trust unless you want to be wrong. Okay. And it is a uh, it has a lot to do with downtown Las Vegas. So we'll put it we'll put it down here. So this, so this is something that's relevant to downtown Las Vegas. Anyone who lives or visits down here. We're really zoomed in. We're under the microscope. We're 100x in. You feel like you've got a sense for anything mm -hmm. that's growing. It's the, the, the um, bathroom floor in the men's room at the Cortez. Ooh, he's close. Give him one zoom out. A little bit bigger. Oh, yeah, yeah, I should. It could be how a many, lot of... How lot, many? You're not... You're not there, you're, well, there's a lot of biological stuff You're going supposed to be here. feeding me how many X it is. Oh, how many X? Yeah, we're uh, uh, 5X. 5X? Actually, not, we're not terribly zoomed in at this point. So there's a lot oh, of uh, oh. biological sure a lot of things. Yeah, there's ecstasy. That's, is that what you're saying? That's, yeah, ecstasy. It's the, st it's the stage in uh, Fremont Street. Oh, you are so close. Keep building on it, though. The stage yeah. at... What else is there a stage at downtown? You're really close. Uh, you guys are, they're, they're, oh, they're not even telling, they're not even what? yelling it out. They're not even yelling oh. out because they want you to figure it out. That's yeah, different. Yeah. Oh, 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 yeah, the event. The big event that yeah. happened this weekend. It's yeah. got three letters. Yeah. It's all about beauty. The, I, I forgot. Someone told me what it was. I, all right, zoom it out. It is the Life is Beautiful stage right that, that here was, in downtown yeah. Las Vegas. Yeah. Good thing you are a famous biologist. Yes. Thank you so much, Martin, for coming Thank out. You. I appreciate Thank the you. audience. Let's give it up for him. Thank Did a great job. Thank you so much. Everyone, check out the periodic table of elements when you get a chance. You can spell your name and learn a lot. And for everybody at home, but luckily, if people want to learn more about the uh, uh, Institute, they can go to unlv.edu forward slash NIPM. So they can go to unlv.edu forward slash nip them. Right. Yes. Has nothing to do with nipples. Yeah. Totally nip cool. <laughs> yeah, yeah, nip them. Just nip them, yes. nip them, yeah. separate from nipples. Check it out. And stay tuned. After this break, we're going to be right back with amazing musicians from downtown, Sonia Sillinger. Stay tuned. Yeah. Thank you so much, Martin. Thank you. Much appreciated. Yes. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, Sonia Sillinger. Thank you for having me. Um, I thought it would be really appropriate to sing a song about science, um, since we do have a guest that is from the science world. Um, I was challenged to write a song based off the word helix, so this is my song called Helix.
ladies and gentlemen, Sonia Sillinger. Yeah. Thank you. Sonia, where, where can we uh, find more of your music? Yes, you can actually find me at artofsoniawithaneye.com and all my music is there. If you're a Vegas native, I have a show coming up on November 12th, which is going to be downtown in the downtown spaces. So you can check out all that info at artofsoniawithaneye.com. November 12th, we'll be there. Can we get you to do one more? Yeah, actually, that'd be good. <laughs> okay, once again, Sonia Sillinger. Um, so this song, I'm actually going to, I had someone in Argentina um, do an animation for me for this particular song that was remixed by another DJ in town. And so it's funny how music and art and the science can connect people who don't have similar languages and that's what i love about art and uh, everything that involves creating this one is called the girl Sonia Sillinger. Thank you, Sonia. That was beautiful. Thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate you all listening. Thank you. And that's November 12th at Spaces, downtown? Downtown Spaces, yes. Right on, right on. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, that's our show. I'd like to thank all of our guests this evening. Thank you to our cast and crew and to all you Vegas talkers at home. <laughs> Don't forget, you're all welcome to be a part of our live studio audience every Thursday night, 9 p.m., right here at the Inspire Theater. Party with us at the rooftop for the after party. Don't forget to subscribe to us on YouTube, like us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. At Downtown Podcast, at Vegas Talk Show. Thank you. Salamat, salamat. Peace, love, and be kind to one another.